California Democrats. I am so excited to see you. I want to thank you, uh, first of all, for the very bottom of my heart. Uh, as you well know, this is my last office as California's chief fiscal officer. And we've come through incredibly tumultuous times. And I'm very excited about the two candidates that we have to replace me. I just want to give you a sense of direction. Uh, the work that takes place in the controller's office is incredibly difficult for many to understand. But at the very heart, it touches each and every single one of us. Uh, if you go back four years ago and you talk to the chairman of the Republican Party and you talk to Meg Whitman, they said, what's the most important office that they want to win? And clearly, it was the governor's office. But then when they asked both of them, what was the second most important office they wanted to win? And they said it was the controller's office. Because at the heart of what we fight for, social values, civil rights, equal opportunity, freedom, liberty, education, access to health care, you have to go through the controller's office. And so that's why they're going to target the controller's office this next go around. And whoever prevails on our side, I need you to do what you did for me. We need to make sure that we have an outstanding controller candidate, and then we take them so that they prevail. Now, I'm going to share a short history of the seven years. And I know it's a little bit technical on what we do, but I just want to show why it makes a difference. So here's the controller's office and our core functions. It's accounting and reporting. But I wanted to turn accounting into accountability because we think about things and we care about people from all walks of life. I think about the people in Bell. I think about the people in Butte. And we know the struggles that the hardworking people in Bell did. So instead of just reporting numbers, we went into the accounting of Bell. And even though they struggled, today they're making a comeback. I was talking to a city uh, council member yesterday, and then we're going to give hope and um, opportunity not only for Bell, but cities like Bell, because they deserve a healthy community, a financially healthy community, a community with public safety, a community with world-class education. And you can't have it when it's on its brink. Cash management I've shared with you before. This state five years ago was in a deep financial crisis. And I just want to thank my great colleague, Bill Locke, here. We used to have those 10 p.m. meetings, 11 p.m. meetings to make sure that California had its crisis. And we didn't give all the pundits, we didn't give all the conservatives who showed hate to our great state and our great promise. We proved them wrong. And today, this state has a stronger economic rebound than has been witnessed in the past. And we're demonstrating California is back, but we're going to go even further, and we're simply the best. Unclaimed property. So when I took over unclaimed property, and I hope all of you today will pull out your smartphone and check if you have any money. Uh, it was almost under federal receivership when he took it over. The Democratic legislature, and I'd like to credit Republicans when they do good things. I thank Governor Schwarzenegger for my, signing my reform package. Today, California has the strongest consumer protection laws in the United States of America. In the last seven years, we have returned 2.7 billion, with a B, dollars of your money, 181 million shares of stock, and we're reducing the time significantly. So check claimit.ca.gov. I want to get your money back to you. Audits. The all-time record was $2.5 billion in an eight-year term. Kathleen Connell, another Democrat. Uh, we did $2.5 billion but we did $2.5 billion in less than four years. Today, we're at $6 billion, headed to $7 billion. This is real money. A penny saved is a penny earned. A few years ago, when we were talking about cutting education, the UC and Cal State systems by $250 million, we were doing everything we could in the controller's office to find every dime and penny and dollar so that we could protect education, that we could protect transportation, health care, public safety. So those dollars made a critical difference. And then I want to also bring up other issues in regards to, I'm very proud of my legal division. People don't talk about the legal division. 
we've taken on the insurance companies on your behalf, along with my high school classmate, Dave Jones. So we had the life insurance companies that wouldn't give the policyholders the benefit of giving, after they passed away, the beneficiaries their money. It was a flagrant practice, costing people over $2 billion. Well, Dave and I challenged them. We we've worked with half of them. We've prevailed. And I just want to thank my legal team. Later this week, I've been, I will be honored by California Lo Lawyer Magazine as one of the California Lawyers of the Year. We're taking on aggressively the insurance companies on your behalf. Then I sit on 81 boards, and don't worry, I won't go over the 81 boards. But as, when I campaigned for this office, I said I was going to take on green and clean energy. I was going to make sure that we had renewable uh, portfolios. And so in my first year in office, I was the first financial officer to start taking on these companies. Right? It was pretty lonely. I went in with my olive green suit down to Dallas, Texas to challenge ExxonMobil. I said I didn't like the f fact that you're junking science, that you won't acknowledge global climactic disruption. And so we're continuing to lead that effort. I'm going to try to take that to the next office to make sure that we prevail. And then my friends in Ventura County, we've won a huge environmental justice issue for you. Some of you know that they wanted to bring international companies to create local pollution, creating LNG facilities all up and down the coast. We prevailed on that. And that's because you elected a pro-environment, pro-economic pro team in your fiscal offices. And so that's what you've done. But the bigger work and why I came to this office is because I wanted Californians, every single one of them, to look poverty in the rearview mirror. Now, we know that we have huge work ahead. We have this incredible economic disparity. We're making huge progress on the job front. There's still a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of scare. There's a lot of tepidness. Uh, but we're working on it. So just as we celebrate International Women's Day, I just want you to know the work we're doing at the Controller's Office and I'll do at the Treasurer's Office does the same thing. Finance is not going to interfere with a woman's right to reproductive choice or access to health care. Nobody knows better. I served 12 years on the board of Planned Parenthood Los Angeles, and then I sat on the C board for three years. So this isn't a political commitment. This is a personal commitment to making sure that everybody gets strong access to health care. <laughs> Bill Lockyer and I made sure that there were no challenges at the health facilities when they wanted to make sure that Planned Parenthood wanted to have access to the development of additional facilities. We wanted to make sure when they had the budget cuts that family planning issues weren't going to be under attack. And so as I leave this, I am running and I want to thank Bill for being such an inspira inspiration, probably great serv service. But as your banker, I'm going to speak truth to power as I have for the last seven years. I've taken on everybody on your behalf. And I'm going to make sure that the bankers give California the best deal possible because you deserve nothing less. And then I'm going to make sure that as we go forward, these prospects are going to be certainly the best. So I'm going to fight because we always have, as a lot of this ticket has, and I understand this, right? I'm the only Chinese American elected to a statewide office in the United States of America. My parents. And thank you for electing Kamala. There's only two statewide Asians in the United States, Democratic statewide Asians. There's two Republicans. And we're going to have to win this battle over the long term, right? Because it's percentage-wise the fastest growing population. But we do this by who we fight for and what our values are. So I'm going to continue on because we know people need affordable housing. So you're going to see unprecedented development with good wages for people who are being left behind because they have no shelter when I am your treasurer. We're going to make sure that we're going to have more Teslas. We're going to have more manufacturing jobs for the hardworking middle class when I am treasurer. We're going to make sure that we have better green energy, better renewable opportunities when I am treasurer. And we're, I'm going to make sure that the students that have $1 trillion worth of loans, the next generation of children don't have to uh, have limited selection they're going to get better opportunities. So I'm going to push for better student loans when kids dream and they want to achieve. 
So I want to thank you, right, because at the core, Dave and I went to a high school that is adorned with a comment, nothing happens unless first a dream. So Dave and I are immigrants to California, we're both from Illinois. But this is my dream. I want to make sure that there is still no other place on this planet Earth that excites the imagination and hopes of those who dream more than America. And I want to make sure that there continues to be clearly, without question, no sweeter spot than California. And so all of you have made that happen. I just want to thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Democrats. Cause I'm happy. Clap along and get